This is an Emacs chat. I'm Sasha Chua, being interviewed by Bastian Gary. Thanks again, Bastian, for doing that chat with me last time. People really liked it, and they were surprised to find that you weren't actually a you know computer science geek. You're humanities. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there is something as a computer science uh, geek. Uh, uh, maybe it's overrated somehow. So let's 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 begin the whole discussion. How did you meet Emacs first? Well, I was in I was in in high school and I was trying to read as many interesting books from the computer section of the library as I could. Small library, hmm. maybe a, maybe four shelves or something like that. Uh, and one of the books there was Unix Power Tools. And Unix Power Tools has a chapter on Emacs that includes, I think, was that mentions of Doctor and uh, other weird things? You'd, like one chapter in, in Emacs, and you've got to put in things like Yao and Zippy or whatever. So I, I, I thought it was very, very strange um, and interesting. So I tried out Emacs, and I actually flipped between Emacs and VI for a while. But once I started learning Emacs Lisp and playing around with configuring it, that's how I, fall, that's how I fell in love with Emacs. And did you have friends learning Emacs uh, with you, or were Not you alone? Not really. Um, mostly the other the other people in the, the uh, who are interested in computers were, you know, they were either using VI or they were using something like uh, Notepad plus plus or whatever it was back then. Uh, and then in university, a lot of people used Eclipse because we started off with Java development. Um, but I've I, I like you know so so Emacs has always been one of those things that it's hard to find people face to face to talk about Emacs with. Most yeah. people just look at you weirdly and like, what? How old is that? <laughs> <laughs> but there's a this bit of uh, dandism kind of. I I found that many people using Emacs are kind of proud of using something different. And um, I myself was not with the, all the developers, so mm. I was not proud of using something different. This, this was just something like that. Do you feel it was something that made you go deeper into Emacs and Emacs Lisp? Well, you have some uh, exotic tool. Uh, early, early on, I think it was in 2002 or 2001, I'd gotten to know, um, actually 2001 or so, I'd gotten to know the, the open source community, especially in Emacs with, with planner mode and things like that. So the early experience for me, you know, it's, it's, I, sure I didn't see a lot of people in real life who used Emacs, but I was in touch with this community, which was amazing. And they used Emacs, well, of course, because this is an Emacs user community. Uh, so I, I felt within that that it was actually this was pretty normal. Uh, and, and so it, it never was really a, oh, I'm going to use something just to be different from other people. It's more like, hey, look at all this cool stuff that so many other people have built, have added hmm. to. Uh, and, and I really like the community part of it. And do you still have, uh, because it looks like you are testing uh, many different softwares, very open-minded about what you can use and what you can try, do you still spend a lot of time testing softwares, editors especially, or are you stuck? <laughs> Editors, not so much. It's really difficult to <laughs> compete with the, the things that I've already got set up. Uh, occasionally, I'll, like for example, I've been trying out Scrivener as a way to to organize blog posts because people really like this ability to, uh, you know, yeah. have all these index cards with stuff on them, and you can hyper, you know, you can link them together or whatever and compile stuff. But then, as, as I use it, I think, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could just hack Emacs to do this thing instead? And yeah. then I go off and I write Emacs code, and then, and then I'm back in. Emacs, so it's um, even when I experiment with new things, it's often with an eye to uh, to stealing ideas and then putting them into my Emacs configuration. Mm. So I will come back to this uh, question about uh, writing, especially because you're uh, really into drawings too, right? And so I'm curious about uh, how a visual person can be happy within a text editor. But my first question would be about a planner. So yes. when did it start and um, what, what was the relationship between uh, the planner and the blogging activity that you have? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, there's a funny story there. Okay, so I came across Planner in my search of interesting things that are Emacs related, and I started using it to keep track of my tasks and my notes. I was a university student back then, so I had a lot of notes from class, from projects, from things that I was learning about. Um, and, and, and because Planner had export capabilities, I figured, okay, why not? Let's export my, my, my plans, my, my, my personal text files, and make those static HTML pages, so web, static web pages on the internet. And so I, I, I put that up there as one of my, hmm. it was my first website. Uh, actually, no, it was my second website. My first website was something on GeoCity, so it didn't really count. Okay. Anyway, so I had this Planner site. Um, and as back then, I was starting to read about uh, RSS and and this idea of like you know a web log. So hmm. I because I I had become the maintainer of Planner after I emailed John Weigley and said, hey, this is super awesome. If you ever hmm. need any help tracking down bugs, I volunteer to kind of do the uh, first pass uh, and then turn it over to you for fixing things. And then he was like, that's all right. You are now the maintainer. So then I was a maintainer of Planner, <laughs> and I was looking for interesting things to add to it. And since RSS was coming out, I figured let's take the remember feature in Planner and, and change it so that you could not only upload it as a as a as a web page but you could also hmm. publish it as an rss feed so cool. you know very technical people could then subscribe to this website it, you know but hey it was there <laughs> yeah so that, i hope yeah. somehow because i hacked together an exporter for augment about rss feeds so somehow maybe I, i'm gonna start blogging and so this is ready for, for production yeah. production mode so and And then you had this uh, activity. Was it uh, uh, a general blog, or was it especially about Emacs? And then uh, the diversity came later on. And in the beginning, it was it was just really a raw brain dump of my notes, and you know, from class, yeah. from life, from the time that we rescued a kitten from our bathroom walls, anything hmm. that I wanted to capture in in, in planner. And it was just a, actually a side effect that. I was using it to also test Planner RSS and, and publishing. Uh, so my blog was really just my personal planner. It had my to-do list. It had all these these other notes in it. Uh, and then as I, in a, I, one of those years, I shifted to using WordPress because I got really annoyed with having to hack in commenting support and all these other little things yeah. in Planner. Uh, so I shifted to WordPress, and then I just I wrote some code that went and extracted all of my posts from Planner and put them into WordPress. So that's how hmm. my blog evolved out of it. It's always been, you know, it's, because it's always been this collection of text files and notes for whatever I wanted to remember. Um, that's hmm. that's what it ended up being. Okay, so um, so now what are the main tools that you're using for Emacs, and what are the ones that you want and still don't have? Well, Org is, is the main thing that I spend a lot of time in because it runs my life, you know, so I've, I've got my, I, I've got it set up for my, my agenda um, and my and, and many of my notes, although I use Evernote for, for a lot of the web clippings and, and other things I want to capture. But in Emacs, hmm. Org still, you know, helps me see what my week is going to look like and, and remember different things. Uh, there, so there's Org. Uh, I do a lot of Rails development, so I've been playing around with, you know, for, you know Ruby mode, but also Renari and a couple of tools for quickly jumping from file, uh, for from files uh, to another, and of course, Magit, Magic, however you pronounce mm. that. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 I use Emacs Lisp a lot, so I just open up a scratch buffer. I haven't quite gotten the hang of either Smart Parents or Paredit, so that's mm -hmm. still in my to-do list. And I guess in terms of my, in, in terms of what else I would like in Emacs, uh, I'd like to get the hang of org attachments so that I can manage more of my images within it. Um, hmm. And um, and I'd like, to, I probably should, you know, should look into getting the hang of Paredit or Smart Parents or all these little tools to make Emacs Lisp development better. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't use Paredit uh, yet. I know I should uh, train myself that, that there is a small learning curve and then that uh, it's very efficient and powerful. But I don't know, I my first impression, my first feeling was uh, that it's a bit uh, rigid. I don't like anything rigid when I'm just uh, <laughs> writing. Yeah. And uh, so my my question, I remember Carson talked about the fun about yes. writing Emacs Lisp, uh, and I somehow I I, I, I it's even relaxing. So. <laughs> yes. 
Do you feel like that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, it's very tempting to, to just keep on hacking away uh, at something because it is really interesting to say, all right, hey, I've got this idea. How do I get closer to it? How do I play around with it? Uh, and then mm. when you're, for example, when you're researching uh, functions to, to use for this or you're looking at other people's code to see if you can build on their ideas, because there's so much code out there, you can get really distracted looking at all the cool things that are that are possible. Um, hmm. I find it to be pretty relaxing. I am you know comfortable with e-debug and stepping through the code and all of that. Um, because I, I find it relaxing because it's a way of getting what I want done. And then because my Emacs configuration file is public and um, and I also occasionally write blog posts related to the Emacs functionality that I'm customizing. I get lots of value out of it too, because I get blog posts and I get a, I get more conversations and ideas. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, somehow I feel like that the, the Emacs is a nice tool for doing small, cheap prototyping. I, I using it for that. If, if you have something in Ruby that you know is big, uh, do you start prototyping with Emacs for small functions or even for even for web development that are with bigger uh, constraints or uh, for, for personal use, definitely. Um, I have a lot of these scripts that start off as Emacs Lisp functions because I like being able to use buffers and you know regular mm. expressions search forward and all these other little things. Um, and sometimes I never end up turning them into a shell script or something else. Uh, okay. I'll use keyboard macros or or, um, or write small Emacs Lisp functions just to do something. And sometimes if I if I've got a good idea and it works out, then I'll go in and write it up as an actual script that other people can use. All right, cool. And so now the, the, the big question, can you show us uh, your Emacs screen? I mean, it's going to be uh, a big revelation for... <laughs> it's not that scary. Uh, hang on a second. Let me switch to sharing my screen here. And then I can confirm... Ooh, <laughs> funny effect there. Uh, yeah. Can you see my screen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's you know it's basically an org agenda, uh, which look you know talk to Bastian Gary about Emacs. This is in progress. I think it'll yeah. take an R, uh, and and that's basically life. As you can see, my uh, org habits uh, say that I'm a I've actually not been very good at either taking my vitamins or telling org that I've taken my vitamins. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I did that the other time, so that's okay too. But that's basically uh, my life. Um, I yeah. also. I use Emacs on quite a, in another environment as well. I've got a local uh, virtual machine for my Rails development, and that right. one's got a different um, Emacs configuration just for my uh, Rails All Rails right. work. So uh, since I since my base system is Windows, uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of all these little conveniences that I got used to in Linux that aren't really available because Sigwin isn't quite there or whatever else. And that's mm -hmm. why I have, my, sure, my, my main org set up, but I also have development environments and virtual machines. All right. I think many people will feel uh, quite relieved to see your habits because uh, when I started using habits, I was so bad that <laughs> I, I, I stopped because it was, uh, it was painful to see all these red colors. Maybe we, sh we should just uh, switch red and green <laughs> and feel better about that. Uh, I actually I use I use the org uh, well because I, I use the variable scheduling a fair bit so for example uh, go to, it's go to, no go to libraries weekly there are a couple of things like strength workouts that I hmm. wanted to do every two or three days so I I really like the fact that org will keep track of that for you um, yeah. you know so it, it, so the org habits comes along as a nice bonus uh, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't really obsess about the red okay. so much. <laughs> So the, the the word library makes me uh, uh, wonder. You seem to be reading a lot, so mm. reading blog posts uh, or books or whatever. Do do you feel like Emacs is changing the way you read? And and um, of course, it's changing the way you take notes. But do you read the web uh, on Emacs? Do you read blog posts on um, NNTP or 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 Gwyn or something like that? I used to. Um, I used to read a lot of NNTP and and also NNTP RSS and, and Gmain. Of course, will will give you an interface for that. Uh, mostly because I've I've come to really like the way that Evernote 
clips things and searches through stuff, I mm -hmm. use that instead for most of my note taking. But I do use org a lot for for taking notes in books because I like its outline form, right? And I like mm -hmm. being able to to quickly search through things and organize things and say I want to I want to uh, schedule this book for a review three months from now. So that's mm -hmm. very nice in terms of in terms of using org to support my reading and my learning. Uh, in addition, I also keep if I can remember where it is. I, I also keep these uh, kind of every so often I make this list of things that I would like to learn. Yeah. Uh, and and again, org is excellent for that because I can outline things. I can uh, turn a, what's a talk. Uh, um, I can I can you know use the uh, the list yeah. indentation to break things down mm -hmm. further and so on. Yeah. And my my feeling I'm taking a lot of notes about books as well uh, with the yeah. hope of turning this into a blog entry at some point or just uh, some web page <clears throat> I'm doing this from time to time and and what I what I uh, discovered was that it lowers um, the, the 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 barriers that you can have before publishing if I use something else I feel like publishing is something a big step and when I <laughs> use org it's just uh, a, a small step, so it, it's easier to publish uh, stuff I write, even if I, f even if I know it's not well uh, written or I have less uh, barriers about this. You yeah. feel like that? About uh, I, I deal with that by not being too worried about posting things. So my, okay. my barriers <laughs> to publishing are pretty low, but I do post a lot from Emacs as well. Uh, and org mm -hmm. blog is super helpful for that. For example, uh, you know, when I came back from the Emacs trip in, in uh, sorry, Emacs conference in London, I basically yeah. start, just started writing this, um, and let me turn off truncate lines again, started writing this long blog post about what worked well, what didn't work well, uh, and it made sense to keep it in, you know, in, in mm. Emacs because it was there and I had all my links and whatever. Uh, but then to publish it, all I had to do was, you know, or, org to blog WP post subtree and it's off to WordPress. Okay. All right, cool. And about the visual stuff, so because you're you're doing nice drawing and and, and you feel when you mention uh, Evernote or the way you can clip IDs and so on, do you miss that in Emacs, which is very linear and uh, which is uh, very textual, or is well, it something that you? Uh, you can actually inline images in Emacs, and I I did install the library, so I could actually hang on a second. Let me break out one of these sketch notes. I think I can actually pull out some of these. This, oh, where's my how to learn Emacs? So you can open you can open images in Emacs, which is not very good. Yeah. So I wish uh, I wish Emacs would let me uh, keep track of more of that stuff. And in particular, I really like Evernote's ability to search within images. I don't mm -hmm. think that's going to make it into Emacs anytime soon. But if it does, that would be fantastic. Uh, in mm -hmm. the meantime. I find that the combination of using Evernote for my multimedia note taking and then using org for the, all those you know uh, quick capture or uh, or uh, outline more structured talks uh, um, or blog posts uh, hmm. works really well for me. It, and it, right. it means I have like kind of two places to look for things, but um, and several places actually because lots of places inside Emacs as well. Um, but it works. Hmm. <laughs> okay. And so, I don't know if you read the Emacs uh, development mailing list, but uh, Lars from uh, GNU's fame yeah. started the, the, uh, a, a new browser Ooh. for Emacs, right? It's called, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's, uh, it's spelled uh, E-W-W, so oh, it's Oh yes, yes, U. I've heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> so and thanks to this new way to browse web pages on on Emacs, I guess there is a lot of work about um, rendering images and changing the size uh, on the fly, which you can already do, right? In, in Org mode, you can decide uh, about the size of the of the pictures, uh, inline pictures, uh, by by giving some attributes to the images yeah. or globally to the file. So, but I guess that there is a, there is room for lots of improvement there, and uh, I I hope this new uh, browser uh, will will boost this uh, development about uh, images being able to 
I don't know, maybe even have uh, floating pictures uh, on, on the top right of your screen or... Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, it, because actually a lot, of my, a lot of my work and a lot of things I focus on is still in text, um, hmm. there's so much to learn and do, even in terms of, of getting Emacs to be even better for that. Uh, hmm. And then in terms of images, well, I... Uh, I'm looking forward to playing around with maybe using Emacs to help organize a visual vocabulary. I'm using Evernote for most of it at the moment, but it'd be it'd be fascinating to see if I can use uh, hmm. if I can use Dired perhaps to to start hmm. putting that together. Yeah. So the missing tool that you <laughs> that would be something about this, about um, searching through through pictures and and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think that that might look more like a command line tool that someone else is going to write that does handwriting recognition, which is tough. Um, mm. uh, but hey, you know, if if I can if I can dream, that would be an interesting yeah. <laughs> utility to have. In the meantime, however. Uh, I, I like the fact that um, that yeah that text works pretty well. I'm starting to get the hang of using org jump to or whatever is control C control J is uh, or go to or go to yeah. is the command to uh, to go around uh, my increasingly uh, enormous sort of org file. Uh, yeah. And um, and and again, there's there's just so much that I have yet to learn about org and Emacs and all these things. Uh. So about this Emacs conference, can you can you tell us a bit more about uh, when it started? What was it? What did you learn? And what was next for for this uh, uh, you know real life meetings like that? That to... was yeah. That was that was you know interesting and surprisingly uh, quickly arranged. Uh, let me dig up my. Uh... Uh, so the Emacs conference was held in March in in um, in London, and it yeah. was really you know uh, this one guy said okay you know we've been talking about having an Emacs conference for a while let's go hmm. ahead and do it. He found a venue. Uh, so Alex Anderson make uh, found the venue. He got people to you know to volunteer as speakers. Everyone flew in or you know drove over if they were close by, um, and it was a completely free conference. So. Super thanks to the venue for making it possible, uh, and it was a lot of fun because eighty, you know, yeah. actually eighty to hundred Emacs geeks in one room. I'd never been in something like that, uh, and it was incredible just seeing everyone for the first time. I'd never seen mm. John. We well, I'd, I'd talked to him on Skype, but I'd never seen yeah. him before, uh, despite all this, you, you know, years of correspondence. Yeah. Um, and, and so it was great yeah. to have everyone in one room, and pe and at that at the meeting, people were like, "All right, you know, maybe we should have a London." Emacs Max users group meeting, hmm. and I think someone went and organized one in. Um, uh, where is that as well? Uh, there's there's another one started up somewhere in the U.S. But so people are really looking to connect. Uh, yeah. I, I would love to see more of these real life meetings, but also because I don't travel so much, I'd like to see more virtual meetups as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're doing a great job at boosting this. I, I mean, it's uh, it's fantastic. So the the, the concrete outcome is is uh, the more meetups. Uh, between Emacs user groups uh, and, and and local local groups, so, and is there any code uh, produced out of the conference or, or out of these groups, or, uh, or no maybe one, it's too hard to track? This, yeah, uh, um, no one's quite. I, I haven't heard of any hackathons yet, mm -hmm. but that would be super cool. Uh, I've always, you know, I I love helping people with their Emacs stuff, so I am always willing to hang out and and um, and. You know, help people with the configs or, or with Emacs <clears throat> Lisp. Uh, the, the main thing that came out of the conference is that you know all these videos, uh, and I, I took I, I drew my notes for them as well. But really, yeah. it, was, it was all about hey, look at the cool things that people are working on. I had no idea Emacs could do that. Uh, yeah. And hey, let's just you know, it's this is a nice community. People people <clears throat> are wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, what I like is it's a very diverse uh, community with uh, all these crazy people having patience <laughs> for something else too. Yeah. I remember there was a, a discussion about playing uh, piano versus oh, yeah. playing a co accordion. Uh, remember, <laughs> and, and the comparison between uh, you know playing accordion is better because uh, it's more like touch typing than piano, where it's uh, heavy typing and stuff uh... like that. So it was. Funny to have this uh, various uh, patient and discussion about that, and it's more, it's more uh, easy to to speak about this kind of of, of activities when you're meeting uh, for lunch in in an Emacs uh, informal conference than yeah. online, where it's not uh, it's a bit off topic on the mailing list. So, 
So the next step, if I understand uh, well, is to have uh, some kind of Emacs hackathon uh, on a virtual meetup online somewhere. Would would that I'd work? I'd like that. I, I I'd like that very much. I in fact I would be up for uh, for having regular Emacs webinars or whatever where we can just do a show and tell session. Hey, look at this cool yeah. thing that I'm doing. Especially for you know uh, like so Emacs rocks is fantastic and I'm. I'm, I'm delighted to see even more hmm. uh, screencast series coming up, but there are all these people with fascinating things in their configuration or or uh, or in their uh, or, or ideas who might yeah. not have a screencast or might not have a blog or might not feel comfortable doing that, but they'll happily talk to a couple of people about what they're doing mm -hmm. with Emacs. So uh, so that's one of the things that I'd love to help make happen. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the, the incredible diversity of, of Emacs users, and that's something that I really, really love as well. Because you might yeah. think, oh, you know, uh, Emacs, right? It's it's kind of like the, 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 the stereotype, oh, computer science, Kiki does a lot of programming and system development. But because people are coming into it for org or for, uh, you know, for the statistics stuff or for all these other modules that people have built into Emacs, you really hmm. get such a wide range of people. I, and I, that, I guess. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I guess it's also because the Emacs has, has such a, a long history, so it, mm -hmm. it, it's it helps uh, gathering people from from various backgrounds, from university yeah. or for um, people learning by themselves, and so on and so on. So. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, I remember when I was in in Japan and I was trying to learn uh, uh, the, the the characters, the kanji. Uh, I I I had a flashcard program uh, actually. I, I used the flashcard .el from, uh, from somewhere from from the Emacs wiki because that's where you know mm -hmm. get every, you used to get everything back then. And so I, so I modified the flashcard program to show me uh, what's that cute pictures of kittens or uh, or tell me a joke every time I got things right, <laughs> which is what you can do when you've got this like flashcard program that's very programmable because yeah, yeah. it's built into your editor. Uh, and one of my one of my my uh, friends and, and co-trainees was like, hey, what's that? How are you doing that? Uh, and although he had never used Emacs before, I set him up with a flashcard sort of setup uh, just so he can give it a try. So it's all these little <laughs> bits of functionality um, that uh, that can help draw people in. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's cool. I have another question. It's a, it's a bit personal and it's, it's about me, my, my own therapy about not... <laughs> Not yeah. being the maintainer anymore. How? So you you step down as the maintainer of of uh, planner and and muse, right? Or yeah. are you still uh, maintaining? No, no, no. Uh, I handed them over to uh, I think it was Mike Olson, and then uh, Mike Olson handed them over to yeah. someone else. I think uh, it's actually great because uh, because it's fantastic to see what directions other people will take stuff. And then yeah. also when I was watching, you know, Org's meteoric rise to fame, I was like, oh, hey, Planner does this really interesting thing, for example, with reading dates, the relative, mm. oh, yeah, that was, that's, you know, plus two days from now or plus three Fridays from today. Uh, so it's like, here, this is a really cool idea. You should totally take it. Uh, and mm. it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's great seeing other people come up with, with ideas for something you've maintained before. And it's also great being able to help with, with other projects that are related. Yeah, but how did you feel? How how did you? Uh, uh, because I feel I feel bad. I mean, I missed the coding. <laughs> I missed the uh, and 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 so I feel useless. You know, I, I had something to do. From, <laughs> nothing stops you from from continuing to look at the you yeah, know the know, list and writing patches and exploring code and all of that stuff. Yeah, I did find that um you know now that I'm no longer on the hook for anything, uh, I I don't write as much Emacs list for other people. I tend to write Emacs list for my config and then if other people find those things to be good ideas, they are certainly welcome to merge them into the code. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, well, sometimes I'll still hang out on the Emacs list channel or check, check out the mailing list or, or Stack Overflow or whatever to see what kinds of Emacs questions yeah. people have. And if it's something I'm curious about as well, then, then I get to write code for it. Yeah, that's cool. I, I do have some bugs to fix on, on org, so it's not as if I have <laughs> nothing to do. But but I was surprised to have this kind of uh, uh, let down feeling as if I was re retiring so from something. <laughs> I was not retiring, but uh, and also this this feeling that uh, there was this new to do mode on 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 Emacs. I just discovered it, it uh -huh. was there for for years, and uh, there is this. To do mode and, and uh, uh, Stephen 
Bagman, the, the maintainer, uh, just wrote a new version. And um, I can find the, the, the link back again. And it's uh, and and he just wrote a new version. So I was like, hey, I, I want to try something new. Uh, yes, yes. So oh. I was really desperate, not not you know, <laughs> feeling away from 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 augment. So this is it exactly. You have it. You have it on the screen. I don't know if it's on the video too, but yeah, and, yeah, uh, that'll be there. I... I have to go find it and, and see what it does, and especially what it does differently, right? So that we yeah. cool to take a look at. There's I want always to test stuff that's it, coming out. Yeah, and coming out from the past, because this one was, was there even before Org Mode, so <laughs> the new ideas, and uh, so it's it's great. Yeah, I, I, one of the things I love about Emacs is, is that all these bits of configuration and all these packages kind of give you a window into the way that somebody else's somebody else works. Right, mm. so so they they manage to do their to dos this way, and 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 then you, when you read the code or you look at the examples or you look at the the mailing list messages, you get a sense of all these other different ways to work, and then you get ideas, uh, like the way that I've I've organized my life has changed so much. When I started using Planner, you know, I was like, okay, this, you know, this is great. I started doing a lot more of the Stephen Covey uh, quadrant sort of thing because that, that was baked into it. Uh, and mm -hmm. then when I shifted to using Org, I was like, okay, I'll use tags and contexts more. I'll, I'll use the weekly agenda or, or whatever because it's so much easier to make that now. And, and so yeah. the tools that I use shape the way that I work. And when I look at the ways that other people work, I pick up even more ideas, more things to experiment mm. with and this uh, I think it captures the the, the paradox and about Emacs quite well it's from the outside from people with who, who don't know Emacs it feel it looks so rigid and from from within Emacs and and the flexibility you have with uh, coding and text and, and writing at the same time and exchanging with other people it opens new possibilities it's it's uh, uh, the opposite of, of uh, uh, rigidity as you say yeah. You, you experiment with new way of uh, new ways of, of working and 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 so on and I I guess uh, uh, we like fiddling we love fiddling and fiddling comes with uh, experimenting something new and and discovering what's inside the machine and so on so yeah so it's, it's I guess the way that I've, I've seen Emacs is it's it's really like a conversation, uh, this huge conversation that I'm having with with all these developers and all these contributors, uh, both the ones who are working on it now and the ones who have, have contributed and, and posted mm. stuff in the past, and it's it's you know we're 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 all trying to figure out interesting ways of working and and changing the you know changing the the tool, uh, changing mm. it's, it's a platform really to uh, to fit that, so it's it. It it doesn't feel at all fixed. In fact, it feels like it's changing so yeah. quickly that it's hard to catch yeah. up sometimes. And it's you know, it's like I look at list packages and I'm like, okay, I I try yeah. reading every. I I've actually read through the entire list a couple of times, but every time mm. I do so, I come across all these new things. And and even when I was trying to write that book on Emacs, which unfortunately got procrastinated because of this very thing that I'm about to tell you. Um, because I was writing about stuff that people could work on and improve, as soon as I posted my draft and people were like, oh, that's a great idea. We should make that part of the main uh, main package. Mm. Uh, uh, that meant my, my draft blog post was then obsolete, but, um, but it meant that everything was better. And yeah. to, to have something... You know, to have, to have something with such an established history also have that kind of flexibility and vitality is, is incredible. Yeah, yeah, especially. And so my last question before uh, before talking about maybe this, this book, you may want to talk about it, and that it's just a, a small story about Walter Bender. Do you know that Walter Bender is the one behind mm -hmm. Sugar? It's a no. uh, uh, Sugar, it's the, the, the name of the platform running on the one laptop uh, per ah, yes, child yes. project and Walter Bender is the is the the guy leading the development uh, the the developers community uh, all over the world and he told once that his first idea for this constructivist environment for kids was Emacs so uh, <laughs> i was i was a bit shocked because Wow. You don't think about putting Emacs in the hands of a, of a six or seven years old uh, child. But the idea, I think it, it's really what you're uh, talking about. The idea was that in Emacs you have 
for example, the documentation is very close to you, the writing is close to you, and the, the, the distance between writing and developing is, is small. So this is this very spirit of a conversation between you and the machine and you and your yeah. uh, friends around. And, and I think that was the, 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 the core idea behind having a constructivist environment that drives you uh, to the code and to all the people around you to build something together. So, just wanted to mention that because uh, uh, I think it's uh, interesting. So, this book, what's the story behind the book? <laughs> well, um, but because I, so so back in two thousand and something, uh, because I, I was learning so much and blogging so much about Emacs, it's like well, there's probably a book in here, uh, and yeah. um, and so I sent a, sent in a proposal to No Starch Press, and they were like, oh, that sounds really cool. We should have a book called Wicked, Wicked Cool Emacs, and they have a lot of other books in the series, so there's a lot of stuff to model it on, uh, and, and and I started with uh, the chapters that I wanted to write the most about because I really wanted people to try out uh, Emacs for personal information management. So I wrote about managing your mm -hmm. you know managing your tasks, and I think I wrote about reading your mail or something of this sort too. Uh, but uh -huh. when I got to this, you know, when I when I sort of drafted the, the three chapters that I was I, I really liked the most, and realized, hey, you know, as soon as I post these scripts that people would put in their, you know, could put in their configuration, uh, because they were often good ideas, or would uh, mm. would then take those ideas, put them in, and so you didn't have to do all that configuration. You just you know set a flag or whatever else, and and it would do all of that for you. I was like, hmm, hmm this book is going to be very short, because every time I add something. Um, then you know the code keeps getting shorter and shorter because it gets everything gets replaced by just a set queue, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Which is nice, but you know, kind of like well. But if the alternative had been to not share any of this and to wait until it was a printed book, and then to have it be obsolete two days after it was published, right? Yeah, it was better yeah. that the ideas got out there. Anyway, the end result was I wrote what I what I wanted to write, which was basically digging into how to use Emacs to run your life, and then it was like. Uh, okay, I don't think this is going to work out. So, uh, so since then, um, I've, I've basically just been posting Emacs blog posts whenever I hack around something interesting in my in my configuration or whenever I need to answer somebody else's uh -huh. question. Uh, but because I'm experimenting with semi-retirement and people seem to like this, you know, drawing, writing, blogging thing a fair bit. Uh, I'm very curious about the idea of, of putting together these resources to help people learn more about Emacs and, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's you know, working with the stuff that's already out there or configuring things or making their own modules and, and, and packages. There's so much to learn. And if I yeah. can, if I can help, you know, put together things like that one page guide to learning Emacs or, or make something like that for org and, and, uh, and other popular modules or say, all right, if you want to learn Emacs Lisp, it's kind of intimidating, but here's kind of a here's a here's a map for things that you can learn so that you can gradually hmm. learn it. Right? Because it, Emacs and Emacs Lisp are so overwhelmingly large, there's so many possibilities. But if you learn a little bit at a time, that helps. However, if hmm. you're new to it, that you don't know which little parts at a time can be m most useful. So huh. I'd love to help put 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 those resources and guides together. Uh, so I got now two ideas. The 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 the, the first one is the map of events uh, from these uh, new communities out of Emacs conferences all over the world, and maybe we can have more and an online uh, hackathon about Emacs list. But I would love to help about that. And the other is this nice map about how do you learn Emacs yeah. because there is a, a, a topic, lots of topics, how you can go from one topic to another topic about, you know, from just small customizations about this module to learning macro and so on. Right, so on. right, right. And that's, it's that's it's the, uh, you know, people people often need, need to see the, the why, you know, why this matters, what, what are they going to get out of it, right? So. For example, if you're reading about keyboard macros, you're reading through the Emacs Info Manual, which is a great read, and I recommend doing this for everyone, but it can be a bit of a reference, so hard to get through sometimes. Anyway, so you're reading through this manual, you come across keyboard macros, um, and so they're like, okay, let's let's play around with this. But it, what if 
people could discover this because they, you know, they can see it in action. This is where those screencasts come in, or they can see, they can they can get the story of of where this saves people time, why this matters, mm. and what you can, you know, how do you get started with it? Okay, first you start off doing keyboard macros, and then you know you start the keyboard macro, you you type in whatever, you close the keyboard macro, you execute, and then you graduate using registers, right? Mm. Or you graduate yeah. to using the arithmetic operation, so you're incrementing your registers and and then you're doing all these cool things so there's there's a yeah. path that doesn't scare people yeah i like this idea because we, we're always talking uh, just by reflex about a learning curve but it's not a mountain to climb it's just a various path that you can yeah. explore and that, that that's what we like and the last idea i think is fantastic like you, you're not making a boot out, a book out of dead trees but you are making this big conversation about Emacs uh, alive and that uh, that's even better I feel like so it's uh, it's more is better than a book and uh, I'm, I'm really glad we you, you started all this and uh, I hope many many I don't know you have many followers doing this even small conversations like like we do with friends and 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 you know starting this uh, this uh, you know to have many conferences small hackathon and and, and maybe some mentoring yes. from people who are more seasoned Emacs developers or users to to have uh, uh, younglings uh, and, and, <laughs> and uh, their wings. I don't know. That that's a nice idea for the future, and I think uh, it might be a nice conclusion for for yes. the for the, for this chat. I'm uh, I'm really glad we. So how was it like? Fifty fifty minutes. 50 minutes? Yeah, yeah it was 45 minutes because sorry about the mix up. Okay, the time, but okay. Yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> time so. flies, but I really like to, I really like talking to other Emacs geeks about all these cool things that we can do with the community. So I'm up for more yeah. conversations like this if people want. Um, Great. And, um, and yeah, that's it, it's it, again, it's 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 been such a fantastic experience. I have you know, I, I found it hard to believe that I've been doing this kind of playing around with Emacs for the past, what, 10 years? <laughs> and yeah. I, I still feel so new and so excited about all of it. So maybe one last word about, uh, do you speak other functional languages rather than uh, other than Emacs Lisp? Well, I played uh, around with, uh, uh, you know, some, some of them, but I, I no, Emacs Lisp is actually the main thing that I use. However, uh, yeah. so what, it, what it has done is Lisp has totally warped my brain because now when I'm writing things like Ruby code, because Ruby has, you know, maps and, and all of yeah. that as well, I think in lists, um, right. you know, the, the code that I, I right has changed because of the code that I'm reading and the code that I'm working with in Emacs and so when I'm when I'm stuck using a like in a language like Java for example mm -hmm. I'm like why can't I just do this thing <laughs> yeah all right so it helps learning Lisp and Emacs Lisp uh, even for uh, other languages oh and, yeah and, and, and also and... because you know I I like I use I use Emacs a lot when I'm, for example, when I'm analyzing data, because sometimes I'll just yank something and you know into a scratch buffer and then do my keyboard macros search and replace and all of that stuff. Maybe write a function that mm. cleans things up if I'm doing this regularly, uh, and then I'll take that and I'll use that as an input for something else. But it's it's such a useful general tool, uh, mm. and it you know and and uh, it's it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So, I, I I think we can stop here, and I, we have many ideas, and so you, you gave me energy to work on some of them. Yay! And uh, that that's really nice. I, I think the mailing list for the Emacs Conf is always uh, on because I, yeah. I started the, the mailing list. It's always available, so we can discuss about further further activity. My schedule is completely full until December, but I I discussed with some French people. So hello, French developers. We are uh, putting together some something about an Emacs small conference in in Paris some Ooh. at some point. And maybe there is a uh, Richard Stallman uh, traveling a lot in France, so maybe we, we can catch uh, Richard and have him uh, explain what is the, the the history, like the or maybe the prehistory of the of <laughs> Emacs and and stories that nobody heard so far. I don't know. That that would be cool too. Yeah, and uh, you know, virtual meetups. Again, I'm I'm up for figuring out yeah. what those look like, how those work, uh, just more ways to connect. 
I'm for it. Uh, Paris is uh, completely rainy uh, for the last uh, two years, so uh, virtual meetups are perfect. It's sunny and, and, and bright. It's good. All right. Thank you so much, Bastian. <laughs> Thank you, Sasha. And um, and hope to see uh, all the comments from people, more questions and more ideas about uh, how to move things forward. For sure. All right. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye-bye.